So I'm giving you a brief overview of our facilities. Um, I'm not going to get in depth with the actual operations side of it as much as some people might think. Uh, as Dr. Glickman stated, this will be more on our buildings, the looks, the feel, um, what I see as I go through and what I see the kids looking through as, as through the kids' eyes, the teachers, and the community. The photo you see up here, you have all seen. This is our district office currently. Um, this, this, this office was not originally our office. Uh, our office, I will get to it was at the ISC building. This building here was the home of the Frederick family. Back in the 90s, the, there was a land sale. And during that land sale, um, the district got a great deal on, on the land, but there was a caveat to it. We had to uh, name the street Frederick, and the school had to be named Frederick. Um, it took a little bit of research to find that one out. Uh, but Miss Lorenzo actually helped me out with finding all that information on it. Took a little bit of digging, but she did a great job. Thank you. Um, so during that time, our home offices happened to be at the ISC, in which I will get into shortly here. So CCSD 46 is located in Northern Illinois in Central Lake County, as we all know. Um, it serves parts of Grays Lake, Third Lake, Haynesville, Round Lake, Round Lake Park, Round Lake Beach, and Lake Villa. It's comprised of seven schools, four kindergarten through fourth grade, uh, one kindergarten through eighth, one fifth and sixth grade intermediate school, and a seventh and eighth grade middle school. The district office houses the superintendent, the business office, human resources, teaching and learning, and operations and maintenance. The ISC houses the technology department. This here was our old district office, known as the ISC. Um, this is where all the magic happens for the staff and students, for the technology. It's a very, very important part of our district. Uh, they have a total of 11 employees throughout the district, four of whom are stationed within the ISC. They are constantly on the go. They do have uh, staff that is within the buildings and are helping out day to day. Avon School is our oldest school in the district. It was originally a one-room log cabin uh, built in 1841. The exact dates to be are, are unknown as the records were destroyed in a fire. Um, we acquired the school back in 1988 uh, from District 47. Uh, at the time, um, the superintendent for the district his name um give me a second sorry i have it written down here is uh david duffy uh he acquired this school and we he was our first superintendent of the consolidated 47. originally it was constructed to this in 1950. Uh, it was rebuilt um in the surrounding areas to grow it has currently 73,000 square feet and approximately 40 staff members and typically around 380 students, uh, grades K through four on a normal school day or school year, uh, not pandemic. This is the only school that I actually found this picture on uh, with the little schoolhouse here, but we do have them at, at other schools where the people can donate the books and pick up books all for the community. Throughout these pictures, you're going to notice different types of learning centers uh, that make the, it comfortable for all the students and teachers to make a nice warm environment. 
as you notice also within these pictures, as Dr. Glick Glickman stated, the classrooms are set up for the current pandemic state, uh, status. All these desks are six feet apart. Chairs over on the computer lab are six feet apart for safe and social distancing. In 1950, Grays Lake had 1,970 residents. By 1960, the total number of residents had grown to 3,762. In a 10-year period of time, that doubled. Woodview was built in 1956 to accommodate that growth the town was having. The total square foot for the school is 56,861. Today, there are roughly 430 students and 45 staff members who fill that school during the school year. Also, I wanna note as we go through these pictures, you're gonna notice different drawings on the walls and different uh, signage um, throughout the buildings. That's in regards to positivity and behavior brought on through obviously culture and PBIS. You're also going to notice the bright colors, the warm, energetic feeling that the schools produce. Here at Woodview, we also have an outdoor classroom here that the children get to use on nicer days, warmer days, when there's not obviously the snow that we have here. Um, so that they, they've got that outdoor sense comfortability. This playground here was renovated a couple years back. Um, and off to the left-hand side, you'll notice a, a silver silo there. Right next to that also, that's a compost field. In the district, we, we tend to uh, bring on renewable resources and teach the children about uh, nature and what we can do to help our environment. Grays Lake Middle School was built in 1969. The school has gone through multiple additions, four to be exact, throughout its 53 years. Currently, there is 121,000 square feet. GMS has 70 to 80 staff members and 670 students, approximately, in grades 7th and 8th. GMS is surrounded by Grays Lake Park District. On any given day, the community walks the paths around the school at CCSD 46, and the Grays Lake Park District shares the paths with and the fields with us. This is not the only school that we have in common with the Grays Lake Park District. Off on the side here, you'll notice a drawing. That is the original drawing for Grays Lake Middle School. At the time, it was not known as Grays Lake Middle School. It was actually known as Grays Lake Junior High. In this picture here is our library. This library actually is named after David Duffy. If you remember, I mentioned David Duffy. He was the, the superintendent at the time when we brought Avon on. This poster here was done by students approximately 10 years ago. It still stands today on the walls. As I stated before, you'll notice different sayings up on the walls for the students to walk by and they see it, whether it's subconsciously or they actually read it, it is there and for them to look at every single day. Meadowview, built in 1993, is surrounded by neighborhood homes. Meadowview shares land with the Grays Lake Park District. The operations and maintenance team work together hand in hand with the park district when it comes to the parking lot and the playground. The park district allows us to utilize the equipment and maintain it while we ensure that it stays clean. Meadowview has 66,000 square feet. Under, under the roof and is home to an average of 50 staff and 320 students K through four. 
As I stated before, the Grays Lake Park District owns a good portion of the land around there. The playground that's in the backyard, in the back of the school, is actually not ours. It is the park district's. Here at Meadow, Meadowview, like many of the other schools you, you've seen or you will see, we have different learning environments. We like to make the learning process a warm and inviting process. These, pro these pods are great areas to get the students out of the classroom and allow them to collaborate while learning. I want to note on these pictures here, these were all done by community members that came in on the weekends and on their own personal time to build and take care of. Up on the top here is our LRC. Kind of an expanded view, but it's got different sections to it for the children to be in. Down on the bottom, we have the picture on the left that shows an archway for the kids to walk through. It just kind of gives that homey feeling and comfortability. It's a nice warm feel to the schools. Here at Meadowview, we do have an outdoor classroom and also a little garden off on it. In this outdoor classroom, one of the neat uh, structures we have is a, su a sundial clock. So the kids can learn how to tell time off of the sun. As I stated before about Frederick School, we acquired the land back in the early 90s, mid 90s on a, on a sale. It was determined that due to such growth in Lake County and in Grays Lake in the late 90s, that CCSD needed to build another school to accommodate all the students by the year 2000, Frederick was built. It currently has 108,000 square feet there's approximately 75 staff members and 600 students in grades five through six. The pictures you see here were done by local Girl Scout projects. I'm happy to say that in my short time here since July, that's when these projects were done. The paintings that you see are done on a fence that surrounds our solar field that we have. Later on in the presentation, I will get a little bit more into our solar, but four of our schools, I will note, do have solar on them. The rock garden off on the left-hand side is a kindness rock garden. Throughout our district, we have them at other schools. Unfortunately, I did not get pictures of them because they were under snow. Like the other schools, we have different sayings. Frederick actually has them in their ceiling tiles. So as you're walking by and down the hall, you can see them. The picture you see in the middle is our lunchroom at Frederick. It is currently set up for the pandemic. The students will sit there and eat lunch throughout the day. In most of our schools and our gymnasiums, we have the climbing walls. Unfortunately, during the time right now, we are not able to use them. Prairie View and Early Childhood Center, also known as ECC. It is one of our different schools, and I say it because we have two schools under one roof. Sorry about that. In 2002, Prairie View and ECC were built. One half of the school is K through four and the other half has early childhood. There's a, about 530 pre-K to fourth grade students and approximately 110 staff members under its roof. Prairie View's total is 106,000 square feet. Prairie View's design inside has a lot of neat little features throughout. And it's, it's got background about Gray's Lake. 
different little things that how the town came about. You'll see two pictures here on each side. I got both angles of our learning center. This is our LRC and then right outside the door and they don't have it up in there right now, which was unfortunate, but there is a green screen where they can put on TV shows and little uh, uh, radios. One of the neat parts about this school also is all the awnings throughout the, the pods and the hallways. It makes it feel like you're, to me, you're in the you're you're in the 60s. It's an old school feel to it with that warm, comfortable feeling for the for the kids. Another thing I want to note is if you've noticed throughout the schools, they've all got bright colors on the floor throughout. Uh, it gives that good feeling for the kids. As I stated before, the pods. This little fireplace in the middle is in one of our pods. The children can come out and they can collaborate throughout. You'll notice that we do have tables set up in the pods here, which is also for the pandemic and set up for it. As they walk into the classrooms here at Prairie View and ECC, the doorways are set up. So it's like they're walking into little houses. On the right hand side here, we have a garden right next to an outdoor learning center. And in the back there, if you can see, that is one of our solar fields also. That is a ground mounted solar field. Here at ECC, they have set up the classrooms with the squares on the ground. These are two separate classrooms you'll notice. And these squares are set up in a way so that the children can sit in these spots and they know where they're at. That's their set spot. I'm sorry, I there was a lot that Miss Lorenzo told me and it, it kind of poofed. But um, the colors are set up in a specific way for the children to know where they're at and what they're doing at that time. They're also for each child. Park Campus was built in 2007. It was originally known as Madrona, like the neighborhood that surrounds it. It's a school with students from grades K through eight. Park is divided between Park East and Park West. There's a grand total of 184,000 square feet under the roof at Park, which is by far our largest school. Park is home to approximately 840 to 860 students and 120 staff member. CCSD 46 and Round Lake Park District were able to make a deal with land swap and usage of the facility to make the build happen back in the middle 2000s. That deal is still in place today. As you'll notice when you walk into the school on the left here, it's a wide open area with an atrium with a tree. Off on the other side, that's your teacher's entrance. I just didn't take a picture of the door there, um, but they're almost mirror images of each other. Like in the other schools, we have pods. These pods here are currently set up as classrooms so that we can socially distance the children. On any other given day and a normal time, they would use these as learning centers also. Give the children a chance to get out of their classroom and stretch and just have a different feel to their, to their classroom. Just a couple sayings that as I was walking through, I saw and it made me think of, we're, we're talking about our mission statements and our vision statements and just different statements that you see and the children see as they walk through and ideas that go through their heads. I thought we're imperative to have in this. Over on your left here, you see Central Park North. There's actually a Central Park North and a Central Park South. One is upstairs, one is downstairs. It's a neat learning area in the middle of the hallway. Um, 
they do have doors, accordion doors that will close around and you can close it off and make a separate classroom. In the center, you're gonna notice two, uh, a blue and a green air balloon. Right above that, it looks like a light. It's actually an echo chamber. You can stand in there and talk and you just hear echoes throughout. But these neat little collaboratory areas are very imperative for our school. Uh, the 23 full-time employees in the operations and maintenance department at CCSD 46 support the sustainability by maintaining conditions that consider environmental impact and enhance the reliability of the facilities for the present and future students. In order to achieve the goals and conditions, the operations and maintenance, maintenance team is always learning and growing so we can operate the facilities in a safe and comfortable environment. We believe that being proactive in facility maintenance is a key factor to ensuring the safety, longevity, and comfortable learning environment. To keep the facilities up to date, we have the following projects planned for this summer and the future. Please keep in mind too that there's a lot of projects on our plate and I just wanted to throw a couple of them out there for everybody to see. Over this summer, I will tell you the roof replacement at Meadowview is happening. But for the next five years, six years out, we have a roof at Avon, Woodview, and Frederick. There is a bunch of concrete work to be performed on the sidewalks of the schools so that they can be safely for the kids, staff, and community members to walk through. Upgrades to the washrooms in the older buildings, boiler replacements for efficiency and being proactive on them, three rooftop units at GMAC. GMS that need to be replaced as they have used and run out of their useful life. Replacement of carpet throughout the schools. Parking lots repaved and lighting added to ensure added safety and tuck pointing at various buildings and locations to ensure that no water or any damage is done to the schools. As I stated previously, we do have solar within the district. The district has a green feel and environmentally friendly feel to it. It also is good for the, for the school to have it. We can use solar as a, uh, a resource for the children in learning environments. As you'll notice here, I put up a couple uh, tables showing you what the solar has produced throughout this past year and how it benefits the district and the community. CCSD is 46 is committed to renewable resources available to the district for both the energy savings and the opportunity to teach the students about conservation and the environment. Below is a table showing the amount of electricity that the district was able to produce throughout the past year using sunlight for the solar array panels. As I had showed you in the previous picture, we have two solar arrays that are fields that are on the ground, which you saw the, the painting on the fence around the one. And then we do have two more that are up on the roof. One is at GMS and the other one is at Park. Meadowview School was honored on Wednesday, September 25th, 2019, as a 2019 U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon School for their achievements in environmental and sustainability education at a ceremony held at the U.S. Department of Commerce in Washington, D.C. Meadowview School was nominated for this award by the Illinois Green Alliance for striving the 21st century excellence in reducing environmental impact and costs, improving the health and wellness of schools, students, and staff, and providing effective environmental and sustainability education. Quoted, our school-wide learning project builds from year to year and immerses our students in learning that allows them to not only improve their knowledge, but also have a positive impact on the world right outside our doors by Laura Morgan, our principal.
as you saw in the earlier pictures, as I was going through it, these are our schools and just the total square footage of schools, 7,200, or I'm sorry, 721,370 square feet under roof at our schools. That does not include our district office or our ISC building. Couple key takeaway factors from today's presentation. The continual upgrades to our older buildings, how much pride the district takes in how our buildings look. Our green initiatives, renewable resources, and community engagement for our facilities.